Swift-footed Hermes glides as fast as thought between the summit of Mount Olympus down to the world of us mortals. The earth passes in a blur beneath him as he speeds over land and sea. Hermes is featured more than any other god in the myths. That's why he's so often depicted in the vase paintings of the ancient Greeks. He's the personal messenger to his father Zeus, so he's often sent away, post-haste, on important business missions. This leaves Zeus free time to attend to more personal matters. But Hermes is much more than a glorified postal service. He's the cleverest of all the gods and a master in the art of persuasion. He's often seen wearing a messenger's cloak and a wide-brimmed hat. And on his feet are winged sandals. His symbol is a herald staff entwined by two serpents, known as the caduceus. The design of the caduceus has seen many changes over the course of time. But this is the version most often used today. The caduceus was formally adopted by the medical department of the United States Army in 1902. A bit of a strange choice, considering that the symbol is not associated with health, but rather with commerce and negotiation. Another symbol, known as the Rod of Asclepius, is similar to the Caduceus, but it depicts a single serpent. It's the symbol of Asclepius, Greek god of healing, medicine, and physicians. And so is appropriately used today, both in the US and around the world, in connection with health and medicine. So then why is the caduceus still being used today in places like the US as a symbol for health? Some say it's a simple matter of misunderstanding, and others believe it's because the caduceus is thought to have a much stronger visual impact in terms of branding, thereby becoming a more profitable enterprise. It's not surprising there's so much confusion and misuse in regards to this symbol, considering Hermes is a trickster god. The poets say that Hermes was born in a cave on Mount Selene in southern Greece. Almost immediately after he was born, the precocious Hermes got the idea to steal his half-brother Apollo's herd of oxen. But on his way out of his cave, he nearly stumbled over a tortoise. In a flash of inspiration, he transformed the tortoise into a string instrument called the lyre. He then quickly taught himself how to play before he continued on his way. When he finally found the herd, Hermes had the brilliant idea to enchant them to walk backwards, so that it would appear that they never left the meadow. Apollo searched in vain for his lost oxen, suspecting a god must have been involved. He asked Zeus for help, who figured that it must have been his latest offspring who was responsible. Although amused at his young son's antics, Zeus made Hermes give the herd back to Apollo. So Hermes ended his eventful first day on Earth playing a melody on his newly invented lyre. Although deeply annoyed at his younger brother, Apollo was completely taken by the beautiful sound it produced. A deal was suddenly struck. Apollo agreed to hand over his oxen in exchange for the lyre. In his role as the trickster, Hermes is also associated with the archetype of the fool or the joker. He shows us that disobedience can be intelligently used to help the individual assert their power within society and even the playing field between those with power and those without. 